Whatever works, Douglas, it's all good. Especially for mentioning it, Joe. So, if the next suit up is a major and you don't have a four card holding in it, then the cheapest, the lower minor is also for takeout. So you've got two options, depending on whether you've got a four card holding in the next suit up, if it's a major. That's the way Filmax works. So if you're sat underneath the preemptor, it's unlikely that you're going to want to double for penalties because you're sat underneath him. So now we treat doubles as 100% as for takeout if you're fourth in hand over the preempt.
So here, three diamonds is diamonds is the preempt suit. So, and three clubs was the transfer suit. So, bidding the preempt suit, i.e., diamonds, shows the two unbid suits. And bidding either major shows that major and clubs. So you've got a way, if you've got a three suited takeout, that's fine. If you've only got a two suited takeout, you've got a way of showing any combination as long as it doesn't include uh, the preempt suit. If you pass and then bid, then it's just single suited with that suit. And again, all this works because second in hand over a transfer preempt is always going to have a second bite of the cherry because their left hand opponent is going to bid something. He's going to bid the preempt suit. If it turns out they've got eight cards in the, uh, the transfer suit then, um, and passes, then that's just tough luck. But that's not going to happen very often. So here we had a, a transfer suit of diamonds and a preempt suit of spades. So over four diamonds by second in hand, four hearts shows diamonds and hearts, the red suits. Four spades shows the two unbid suits, i.e. clubs and hearts. And five clubs shows clubs and the transfer suit, i.e. both minors. If second in hand passes and then doubles, then that's for penalties. If they pass and then bid a suit, then uh, that's just single suited. And if they make an immediate double, then it's three, a three suited take out of spades. So fourth in hand doesn't have all these different options um, because a double is just strictly for takeout of the preempt suit and everything else just has to be natural because partner's already passed um, and you sat underneath um, the preemptor and almost for certain you're not going to get a second chance to bid as fourth in hand. Because by this point, your right hand opponent has probably bid the preempt suit. And if you don't bid, the chances are that everybody's going to pass unless partner has a delayed, uh, a delayed bid. I pass and then double or the pass and then bid. Yes, don't forget that with transfer suits, with transfer preempts, uh, it's normally um, the person with the long suit who's going to end up putting their hand down as dummy. So the fact that your, if, if your left hand opponent opens four diamonds showing a good spade preempt, right hand opponent bids four spades, you're not now second in hand for the purposes of film X if that's what you've agreed to play because you're actually sat underneath the, 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 the hand that's got the spades so that's the critical thing it's not actually second in hand it's your position in terms of where you are so here you could play film X by fourth in hand over the transfer preempt 
So if it goes four diamonds, pass, four spades, pass, pass. Now you could play Filmax potentially. Because fourth in hand is actually second in hand over the, the hand with the long spades. Like I said before, uh, transfer preempts at the three level um, have sort of, to some extent, fallen out of fashion these days. You don't often see them. Um, they used to be quite popular in the 80s because people thought it was really cool. Um, but these days, it's more common to find them at the four level only. But you may just occasionally find somebody who wants to play very scientifically. I think the reason they've fallen out of vogue is that there isn't a massive advantage. Um, for three level preempts uh, in, in playing the transfer. Um, at least I, I've not found a great uh, a great advantage. I mean the, the, the complex version of OCP doesn't use transfer preempts as such, it uses something slightly different where the three diamond opening is either a, a three level preempt in either major or a four level preempt in either minor so it's it's actually an unspecified preempt rather than a transfer preempt as such and so you have to play slightly different responses so the defense I've just outlined to you doesn't really apply in those circumstances Anybody got any questions? Okay, let's move on.
do, 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 do. I don't actually, I don't think I've actually got a, a two-no trump hand I can show you, Joe. Sorry. Um, it doesn't have to be based on a long minor, but, you know, if you've got a sort of, you know, an 18 count balanced, uh, it's, it's much more difficult to see your way to, to making eight or nine tricks. Um, and that's fine if, if your partner's got something they can transfer into over two no trumps. Um, but it's just, it's just, <laughs> that's difficult to explain. Um, 
all, all I'm saying is that very often you will find that, that the two no trump bidder has stops in both majors so, so they know that ops can't just immediately run six tricks in their weak major but by the same token the two no trump bidder wants to have a source of tricks themselves that they can just go at so they will have probably a long strong minor if they're really weighted towards the majors it's more likely that they're going to end up um, it depends on the vulnerability uh, but they may make a takeout double first and then bid no trumps if they're really strong it's difficult to double for penalties though um, using Dixon So if you had a, a real trump stack in both majors and you wanted to double pen for penalties, the chances are that as second in hand, you would pass and hope that partner could come in with a fourth in hand protective double with 11 plus. Um, sometimes you just fixed. But Dixon doesn't really have a penalty double as such. Any other questions? I do have a multi hand to show you, but it's not it's not a um, a two no trump one. So here, if East was a little bit weaker, um, you know, maybe give them a small spade rather than the Ace of Spades, then they would double immediately over two diamonds.
So this doesn't apply over their defences to R1 no trump opening. We have different methods there. This only applies when um, partners open one of a suit, a natural opening of one of a suit, and they've made some kind of a two-suited overcall that shows either one anchor suit and another unspecified suit or two specific suits. When partners open one no trump, we, we, we use different methods because um, we don't know that partners got a long suit and um, we know more about his, his hand in other ways, i.e. his precise range and the fact that he's ostensibly balanced or semi-balanced. So we use different methods there. So, so Bergen, the Bergen defence to, to two-suited overcalls doesn't apply when partners opened anything that shows a balanced hand rather than a suit as such. So if, if you're playing precision, we don't normally play Bergen after their two suited overcalls because the one diamond opening doesn't promise diamonds. Um, obviously, if you play that it does show a diamond suit, which basically means you're not playing precision, then you can. Um, This is why we don't use it over a precision diamond, because you don't know whether partner's got diamonds or not. Um, you're shooting yourself in the foot slightly if you use it over a precision one diamond. So this is only when they've shown two specific suits. So if, if for example, you open one club showing clubs, they bid two clubs showing both majors, 5-5, five, five, weak or strong. So now over their two club bid, the cheapest Q bid you've got is two hearts because they've shown both majors. So again, we're dealing with what they've shown, not what they've actually bid when we're coming to Q bids. We're talking about the bids... The, the suits that they've actually shown with their bid, their two-suited overcall. So the cheapest available cube bid over one club, two clubs, two hearts. Um, the two heart bid here is a limit or forcing raise in clubs, i.e. partners. Uh, partner suit. If it goes one spade, two spades over call showing hearts and diamonds then three diamonds is the cheapest cubid so that shows a limit or forcing raise in spades partner suit So, if you cubid the more expensive of ops two suits, when this is again when they've shown two specific suits with their overcall, um, 
a, a cubit of the more expensive of their suits is either an invitational raise in openers suit or a forcing bid in the fourth suit so again let's stick to a one spade opening uh, it goes one spade two spades over call showing both red suits five five so now a th the three diamond bid was the limit or forcing raise in openers spades a three heart bid is an invitational raise in spades or a forcing bid with length and strength in the fourth suit opener will tend to assume that it's the invitational bid in their opening suit and bid accordingly if you now bid the fourth suit then it's a game forcing bid in that so direct suit raises of spades are just preemptive and a bid of the fourth suit rather than the cubit of the more expensive uh, of op suits is just competitive it's just natural and non-forcing any questions so far when both of op suits are known we'll come to when only one suits known in a minute but any questions so far about um, particularly the cubits of, of their suits so just remember bidding partner suit is just um, competitive or preemptive bidding the fourth suit is merely competitive everything else is loaded onto the cubits of their suit and a double is basically always for penalties anybody got any questions so far the weak, weak raise of what the weak raise of what uh, Jan So, so here, three spades is, is just competitive in spades. Four spades is, is preemptive. Um, might have a reasonable hand, but certainly not uh, expressing any desire to go beyond four spades. So over two spades, showing both red suits, three diamonds is either a limit raise i.e. a limit three level raise in spades so that's sort of vaguely invitational um, or it's a forcing raise in spades so it's limit or forcing because that's the cheapest cubit three hearts is definitely invitational and it's up to you as to whether you play um, the invitational raise as stronger than the limit raise or not most people would so limit raise is sort of vaguely invitational um, the more expensive cubit of their suit is strongly invitational or Well, cubing the cheapest is either a limit raise, so it's it's mildly invitational. Um, cubing the more expensive does double duty because it's either strongly invitational in openers suit, 
or it's forcing in the fourth suit. Don't forget. And actually forcing in the fourth suit is more common because you've already got um, various other means of showing um, you know, the limit raise is, is ostensibly invitational. That's what a limit raise at the three level normally is. So that must be that must be to some extent invitational. But you can you can uh, discuss that with your partner as to which one of those two the limit raise or the invitational raise is is more invitational, if you like. Okay, Ellie. Like I said, the the cue bid of the more expensive suit is most commonly a forcing bid in the fourth suit. But it can also be an invitational raise in opener suit. And okay, but like I said, Bergen itself doesn't particularly specify which way round you play those two. I, I would always play the limit raise is is mildly invitational and the Q, the more expensive Cubid is strongly invitational and I think that's more intuitive if you like to play it that way. As long as as long as you get the distinction that the cheaper cubit is either the limit raise or it's a forcing and a forcing raise that's probably potentially interested in looking for a slam if partners maximum for their opening. And the limit raise is, is probably looking for game if partner is maximum. That's the difference. So partner will assume that you've got the limit raise um, and bid at the three level in their major or at the four level depending on their own range. And depending on, on that, if you have the forcing raise, you can now continue with Q bids or whatever you you agree to play. Um, and uh, or you can just stop in game if partner's shown a, a minimum hand that's not particularly interested by just bidding their, their suit at the three level. Um, so now you can just sign off in game. Any more questions, anybody? before we look at uh, where their overcall only specifies one particular suit, which is a bit more complicated. Okay. So, if they, if, if you open one spade, and they bid two spades showing hearts and one of the minors. They've only specified one suit now, which is hearts. And it's a toss up as to whether their other suit is clubs or diamonds. So they've only specified one suit. So now you've only got one qubit available, i.e. three hearts. Um, so that's always the forcing or limit bid in opener's suit.
I have to say, if you're um, if you're playing OCP, this is all different. So what I've just said there, um, particularly where the two spade bid is concerned, OCP practitioners will play that as gamma in hearts um, when partners opened. Uh, but if you're not playing OCP, then all of those are available, especially if you are playing Leb in competition. So Leb in competition, as you can see there, gives you a lot more nuances for the different sequences um, because the two no trump bid is available um, to differentiate between slow and fast sequences and there's one last one Again, we don't want it to be invitational in diamonds because clearly diamonds is their other suit. Because in this instance they've shown two specific suits. So again, the di direct suit raises are just competitive or preemptive, not invitational to more. Um, the slow three hearts over their two bid, uh, their two heart bid, is mildly invitational hearts. The two spade bid, the the Q bid of their suit, is limit or forcing raise in hearts. But again, if you're playing OCP, it's gamma. So this is different for OCP, which is why very often OCP practitioners No, Joe, the, the first one did, the second one doesn't. So the second example is, is where two hearts is showing spades and a minor. Right, where was I? So again, number D there, if you're not playing OCP, is is game forcing in hearts with a spade control and the fast two spade bid could be game forcing in hearts without a spade control. Um, if you're playing OCP, then probably the slow three spade bid is going to be a directional asking bid, looking for three no trumps. Because you've got other ways of, of forcing to hearts, forcing to game in hearts.
Again, here we don't know which miner they have. It's true, Joe. I, you know, um, where you don't know what their second suit is, you just have to bid your hand, um, you know, and take a chance. If you decide not to compete, then that's also fine. If you're worried that that their second suit may be the suit that you want to show, um, obviously the fast three clubs and the fast three diamonds is is much safer because you've got the heart tolerance and partner if they've got a shortage in your suit which they surely have will have um, if if it's ops second suit uh, then they can just convert back to hearts and that's fine um, G is a little bit more risky I agree because uh, you're not giving partner the option because they're bidding three clubs and you're passing it. But you're much less likely to do that if you've got no, no heart tolerance. That sequence in G is going to be quite rare. Uh, the impulse... Um, to wait and see over their two heart bid is going to be much greater if you have no heart tolerance. Okay? So, H is much more acceptable because, again, um, if partner really can't stand diamonds and has got, you know, six, seven card hearts, then they can just go back to hearts because they've got the option. Whereas G is, is much more dodgy because you're not leaving partner with another bid. You're just, they're just going to bid three clubs hoping that you're going to bid something else and you're just going to pass it. But balance of probabilities, you know, if um, you will come unstuck sometimes with G, but you won't come unstuck many times with the others. So the main thing to, to, to take away today, if you're wanting to try Bergen, is this business of the, the cheapest qubit or the only qubit that's available to you of their suits is the limit or forcing raise in partner's suit. And the more expensive qubit where they've shown two specific suits, the more expensive qubit of their suits um, is either an invitational raise in partner's suit or a forcing raise in the fourth suit. And if you if you don't use the qubits, then it's all natural and non-forcing. Um, so direct suit raises of partner's suit are just competitive or preemptive, and bids of the fourth suit um, are just natural and non-forcing. That's the thing to remember. Any questions before we, we go ahead and do some practices? So you don't have to be totally expert in, in what we've been discussing, 
but uh, if you haven't really followed what's been said, then probably best if you don't sit. But could I have four people to sit, please? Come on, guys, don't be shy. Thank you, Douglas. Barry, come on, get in there. Phil, Esther, Cheryl, Malcolm, come on. Come on, two more. Thank you very much, guys. So it doesn't matter what system you're playing, playing whatever you like. Um, but it might just be worth agreeing. Um, Shato, have you followed the lesson? That's the point. Sh okay, if you followed the lesson, Shato, it's fine. Um, I don't think South plays precision as such anyway, so Joe will probably be quite happy to play 2 over 1 or standard American. So let's suppose that, oh, blast, sorry. Can we have three passes, guys? We've still got this problem with uh, BBO inserting this spurious hand. Can we have three passes, please? And I want north, north to be the actual opener. And what I would actually like is for, okay, um... So I think we're going to we're going to play this as a multi by north. It was actually supposed to be a transfer preempt, but not to worry. We'll try it as a as a multi first, and we'll try it as a a transfer preempt afterwards. So ignore the first three passes. <laughs> so again south responding to a multi two diamonds uh, will probably be yes it is Joe so you've got a fairly weak hand um, you're only going to really get excited if partner's got spades so you're just going to bid two hearts that's the way multi works You could bid three hearts if you had sort of preemptive support for both majors. Um, that's what the three heart response mids means. It's worth noting actually that the west hand, I suppose, could bid two spades over two hearts as a weakish take out of, of hearts but they don't really have the hand for that so now the delayed double by east is 16 plus So now we know that North had a weak two in hearts to start with because they passed the two heart bid. So 
So West has the advantage now of knowing that 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 uh, East is 16 plus rather than 11 to 15. Okay. Um, lead and claim 11 tricks, I think. Yeah, you're going to lose a heart and a spade. Okay, well done. So hopefully that's shown you um, a delayed 16 plus double using Dixon. Can we actually just bid this one again? Again, three passes to start with. But now could we have a transfer preempt of three diamonds from north? Um, and we'll see how uh, the Clark defence fares. That's actually what this hand was supposed to show. So three passes again, because I want north to be the dealer. So three diamonds, please, Shatha. Um, and best if you alert it as a transfer preempt, just in case East West are sleeping. So this is showing a heart preempt here. So a free bid of three spades here. <coughs> so West must have some values. <sighs> okay, that's fine. Um, worth noting that, that East could have decided to treat their hands a two suited bid um, they could have bid three spades over three diamonds to show spades and diamonds um, but obviously given the hand that they have a three suited take out is fine you're not always going to be four 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 one uh, and they have got good support for anything so four spades, all five diamonds are both fine here. Well, no, I, I mean I I would normally keep I would normally keep two suited uh, bids like three spades as being five five. Um, it's a matter for you to discuss with partner as to whether you're definitely promising four but may have more. Um, I think, to be honest with you, if, if I was bidding this hand, I would be doubling rather than bidding three spades. Uh, if my spades and diamonds were the other way round, I might bid three spades. If I had four diamonds and five spades, um, I, might, I might bid three spades. Um, I don't really want to get into a large club contract here. Um, because my clubs are too strong and I don't want to be roughing with them which I almost certainly will have to uh, so give me five spades and four diamonds and I might bid three spades rather than doubling um, just to emphasize the fact that I do have five card spades um, and if partner gives preference to diamonds then that's fine I'm not unhappy with that Okay, any more questions?
Very good. Uh, let's try this one. Um, okay. We'll just we'll just bid this one as normal, I think. Um, so another multi here. Shatha getting and Joe getting plenty of practice bidding multi. So Douglas has very os various options here. Um, if they were seriously worried about them having a, a huge fit with North, they could pass and then double. So again, the delayed, the delayed double is now a 16 plus takeout of spades. It is, Douglas, yeah, I was going to mention that afterwards, but uh, uh, no problem. It's difficult to keep all these things in your mind if you haven't come across Dixon before. And I mean, at the end of the day, Douglas, your, your heart suit isn't that strong. Um, you know, normally a, a direct three hearts over two diamonds would you would probably want it to be a slightly stronger suit Very sophisticated sequence. So here, and as I mentioned before, um, 11 souls available over this, effectively this is like a week two spade bid, so over the double we're playing transfer 11 soul, so three diamonds was a transfer to hearts, um, four hearts a super accept, uh, five diamonds a Q bid for hearts, and he's decided to play in five diamonds. <laughs> Oops. Um, yes. Okay. 
Um, I think the danger here is, is that presumably you didn't recognise the three diamonds as a transfer to heart. Um, but um, when you haven't had a chance to discuss these sequences and practice them, uh, these things happen sometimes. Okay. Not to worry. So, ideally, over five diamonds, he should be bidding five hearts or bidding six hearts. Um, no problem, Douglas. Don't worry about it. Uh, so, six hearts is going to be fine here. Um, at the end of the day, it's a 50% slam. Um, got to lose a club. But it's not bad. Anybody got any questions on the sequence? So don't forget, especially with the immediate and the delayed double that we do potentially have transfer 11 sol operating here and that uh, if you use it over doubles of weak twos um, and that adds a lot to your arsenal especially over the direct and the delays past two diamonds Three hearts past four hearts. Yes. Um, I mean, over three hearts, West might bid four diamonds, I suppose. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they got two bullets and superb spades, two superb heart support, but they'd be a little bit worried about the spades, I guess. Um, and you know there is a notional upper limit to these um, direct three bids like two diamonds three hearts you know you're not going to be much stronger than about an 18 count so West might not look further than game um you know, I think if you had a 22 count here, you'd be doubling. You'd be showing the 16 plus double. And then, presumably, partner isn't going to su suggest hearts to start with. Uh, and you're then going to bid hearts. So that's now like a double then bid. So that's, you know, showing a monster hand. Anybody else got any questions or comments? Okay. Anybody else want to sit in before we move on to the next hand? Or are you all just quite happy to let these four do the work? If anybody wants to sit, just pipe up. I didn't say you had to sit to stand, Joe. Nobody's asked yet. If somebody shouts up to say they want to sit, then I'll ask for volunteers to stand, but not otherwise. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's try this one. So I guess you guys are playing standard American or two over one, are you? Two over one, okay.
Okay. It is interesting. <laughs> so two spades is a cubit of the more expensive of their suits. So this is um, either invitational, an invitational raise in diamonds or a forcing bid in clubs. Now, if you, I guess you two aren't playing uh, competitive eleven sol. So two no trumps is um, um, right. My God. <laughs> I think East must have been thinking, whose hearts are these anyway? I certainly think you've got North well confused, Joe. Certainly, if I was North, I would be well confused by this point. Well, that's the whole point. <laughs> if two spades is to be believed, then two spades is either an invitational raise in diamonds or a forcing raise in clubs. But he's never mentioned clubs. So, so I think you have to assume that two spades was an invitational raise in diamonds. So he's now agreeing diamonds, finally. And who knows what three hearts was. Which is a shame, because you've got seven clubs, seven diamonds, both available. I think the two spade bid here, just just claim 13 tricks, guys, because uh, there's nothing to the play on this, really. Um, seven clubs is really where you want to be. Okay, so where did this go wrong? I think the two spade bid was the the real culprit. I think... South should have bid two hearts over two diamonds. The cheaper cubid. So that's either a limit or a forcing raise in diamonds. Yeah, but Joe, you've got a... So you've got a 17 count. You're far too strong to, for a strong invite. You've got a forcing raise in diamonds. Okay, well let's let's just do this one again. We'll have a do over. I Okay, so this is the limit or forcing raise in diamonds. So you can virtually start cubiting here. North. Yes, I guessed that, but I don't think it was obvious to partner. That's the trouble, Joe. Because because your two spade bid was wasn't a forcing potentially a forcing raise, it was potentially only invitational or forcing in clubs. 
Yeah, but you're still confusing him, Joe. That's the point. If you're playing, if you're playing Bergen over two diamonds, then two hearts is the right bid because you've, you've definitely got a forcing, a game forcing raise of diamonds here with your hand. Christ, you've got four of the top five honours. Um, okay, so two spades was a cue. Three hearts is definitely a cue. So now we north. Okay. So if if South bid if South bid five diamonds at this point, then we'd know that they only had a limit raise to start with. But now we're cooperating with a cubiting sequence. South is known to have started off with a, a game forcing raise. Because if all they had was a limit raise, um, they wouldn't likely be cooperating with a Q bidding sequence. They would just do a fast arrival to five diamonds. No, Ellie, the whole point is that South is far too strong to show a strongly invitational hand. They've got a 17 count opposite a one diamond opener. They're far too strong for two spades. Two spades is a limit, you know, it's like bidding three diamonds. It's like bidding one diamond, three diamonds, or... No, it's not. It's right, but, but two hearts is either a limit bid in diamonds, or it's a forcing, a game forcing slam invitational hand in diamonds, raise of diamonds. The two spade bid is an invitational raise. It's invitational to game in diamonds, not invitational to slam. That's the difference. The, you could bid two spades if you're going to treat your hand as a forcing raising clubs. It doesn't matter. They're both cubids of, of east suits. East has shown both majors. So two hearts and two spades are both cubids. And the way Bergen works is that the cheapest cubid is the limit or the game forcing raise. Because most of the time it's going to be a limit raise. So limit is cheaper than invitational. That's the way we, we played the limit. We decided that we would probably play the limit raise as mildly invitational and the invitational raise, i.e. The, the more expensive cubid, as being strongly, strongly invitational. It is, but it's mildly invitational, Joe. Whereas the two spade bid is strongly invitational, but it's invitational to gain. The limit raise, sorry, the, the cheaper cubid, which is the limit raise or the forcing raise, is either a, a mildly invitational to game or game forcing an invitational to slam and you then have to show the difference with your subsequent bidding I'm sorry if you've got confused here um I did say that the the more expensive cubit is most often 
a forcing bid in the fourth suit. <coughs> I think actually, yeah, okay. I, I think I might have been tempted to bid six clubs over five hearts here, Shatha. Um, well, the thing is, the six clubs um, in about a quarter of an hour. I think six clubs would be like a Grand Slam force in diamonds here. Um, six diamonds is fine, but in practice you're going to make seven. Um, Okay, so is anybody still unclear about the difference between where, where ops have shown two specific suits? Yes, I think I, I think jumping to four no trumps was a bit premature. I think if you show your club control, Like I said, um, May, back earlier, in practice, OCP users tend not to bother with Bergen. Um, for the simple reason that the cubids are generally gamma, not over one diamond, but um, we wouldn't tend to use we wouldn't tend to use uh, uh, we wouldn't use Bergen over a one diamond opening anyway so I, I mean OCP has to cope with this sequence differently because if North opens one diamond on the North hand and East bids two diamonds South doesn't know that that North has diamonds because the one diamond opener doesn't promise diamonds whereas North South are actually playing two over one so it does tend to suggest that they got a diamond suit and certainly South is entitled to proceed on the assumption that they have until North makes it obvious that they actually haven't got a diamond suit so uh, Well, I mean, four clubs is just continuing the, the Q bidding sequence. Um, yes, probably four hearts showing the heart control. You see, in over four hearts, you could actually, North could actually bid five no trumps as a Grand Slam force. Because you've covered all of them. You know, you've had a nice cubiting sequence here where you've I don't I don't may I don't really want to get into a an OCP discussion um here. OCP doesn't really use Bergen. Um we certainly don't use it over a one diamond opener. Um, you would probably, you know, over well, <coughs> one diamond, two diamonds, I think you'd have to start off with a fast three clubs from south and then take it from there. Um,
fair enough, Joe. I, you know, Joe, you guys are going to be using um, Roman key card. So as long as you've got a the two heart bid sets diamonds as trumps. So there's no danger of the response to four no trumps being misunderstood. But it would have been useful to get a four club and a four heart bid in before four no trumps. Um, over three spades, four clubs, four hearts, and then four no trumps. And now, um, over five hearts, uh, you know, all these cubits, you know that the, the cubit of hearts is likely to be a singleton. I mean, North knows that it's likely to be a singleton. Um, given that East has shown hearts and spades, uh, that leaves the three spade bid almost certainly being the king, and the three club bid definitely being the king. And really, the hand is just going to play itself. So, as long as you're happy that he's got the ace king of diamonds, which you are with five hearts, um, I think seven diamonds is, is not unreasonable. No, what I meant, Joe, by the way, before, is that... Yes, I was going to point that out as well, Shell. But, but don't forget, North doesn't know that Sal's got a club suit because he's never shown it. The three club bid was a Q bid for diamonds. Um, what I meant, Joe, was that if if West, sorry, if North bids four clubs instead of, or just just stand, Joe, if need be. If North bids four clubs over three spades and South bids four hearts over four clubs, what I was suggesting is that North could bid five no trumps just to track on Trump's solidity. I wasn't suggesting that South would necessarily bid five no Trumps because... Okay. Um, as Shatha himself pointed out, the four no Trumps was a bit premature. And you're better off using, you know, using the space for Q-bids if you can. Um, because it makes it much clearer when you get the response to Blackwood as to exactly what partner's shown. Okay, I think we've got time for one more hand. Does somebody want to sit south? Please. Pretty please. No. So he's still playing two over one, Shutter, I guess. Thank you, Roger. So this, this is a, a strongly invitational raise of spades. Three diamonds would either be a, a mildly invitational raise in spades or uh, a game forcing raise in spades.
Well, I think I'm going to bid this. So this is definitely accepting Shatha's uh, invitation. Nord 314 if you want, Leila. Or 14. Okay, that's fine. Whichever you prefer. So just because North made a, a strongly invitational raise rather than a forcing raise um, doesn't mean that we can't reach slam here. Uh, so the message of four clubs is absolutely unmistakable. Um, if I'm going to go past three spades, I'm obviously accepting the invitation in spades. So four clubs is saying four spades is fine, but I've got some stuff in reserve yet. Um, and I quite fancy a slam. And then we have a flurry of cubids. Roman key card, just to, ch just to check on exactly what the cubits have shown and then six spades and actually you're going to make 13 tricks here but uh, you wouldn't want to bet the farm on that anybody got any questions now okay guys another couple of bits and pieces quickly No, well you said you were going to run it. <laughs> 